dear students, you are well welcome once again to a Remika program. The subject is geography from five. And the topic that is continuing from previous, this is position, behavior, and the structure of the earth. For those we have been together, you all understand that Previously, we covered some parts. We were able to describe the parts of the Earth, especially the atmosphere, what makes up the atmosphere, and how it appears, meaning the vertical structure of the atmosphere. And we concluded by seeing the vital values, the importance of the atmosphere. Now, in today's lesson, let us see the shape of the Earth. The shape of the earth, my student, I don't think whether you have ever asked yourself as what does the planet earth look like? What is the shape of the earth? You can get some, some sort of the answers. Is the earth flat? Is it spherical? Is it overall? What type of a shape does the earth have? So after a number of studies, some geographical scholars of thought came up with the proper shape of the earth by saying the shape of the earth is spherical. It's not flat, it's not oval, it's very, very, very spherical. But it isn't a perfect sphere, but rather it is a flattened sphere. Now imagine, when we say the earth is a flattened sphere, you can always ask yourself, what have been the causes for that shape? Was it flat originally? Oh no. Now, let us see. If we say the earth is spherical, but it is not a perfect sphere, but rather frightened sphere, what does it mean? that when we have the North Pole and the South Pole, we have the distance from the North all our way to the South. We have the distance from the other part of the Earth to, this, to the other part of the Earth. Are they the same or they are very different? Some are comparing the shape of the Earth like that of an egg. Now, do all sides equalize or they are different? We will come to see that from north to south, the distance is a little bit further or high distance compared to from the other part to the other part. That here, they came up with that we have 13,832.88 kilometers. And on this side, from this side to this side, that we have 12,756 kilometers. What does this mean? That from the north to the south pole is longer compared from the, the other side to the other side. Now, my question to you, what led to this appearance? There are reasons, there are causes for the earthy shape. Causes of the earthy shape. The first cause being rotation of the earth. As we all know <coughs> that the earth rotates, the, the earth spins on its own axis, west to east. But the speed, as the earth rotates west to east, the speed is so high at the equator that the speed is almost 16.00 kilometers per hour. Now, at this speed now, the centrifugal force 
has been able to overcome the earth's gravity. That's why the things or matters are pulled out one at the center. And it is this act that led to the budging of this part. And at the same time, we have the second cause, which is force of gravity. Force of gravity. That the force of gravity is very high at the, at the poles than any other place of the earth. And at the poles, the speed of the earth is almost absent, if not there. And therefore, as the earth rotates, and the speed is almost absent at the North Pole and South Pole, the force of gravity pulls on both sides. And that's why we have it longer from North to, to the South Pole compared to the equator part. And therefore, basing on this, that's why the scholars of thought are there to tell us that the shape of the Earth is spherical. But it is not a perfect sphere, but rather a flattened sphere because of the differences in the distances from North Pole and from West to East. But now, whatever has been said has the argument put forward. How do we as geographers defend this point that the earth is shape it is spherical, is flattened the sphere? There are evidences that were put forward as to defend the shape of the earth. And the evidences, evidences for the earth's shape. Evidences here. The first evidence is sunrise and sunset. Sunrise and sunset. Imagine where you have something that is spherical, and the earth is illuminated by the sun. But not all parts of the earth are able to be illuminated by the sun at the same time because of this spherical earth. Imagine if we have the sun on this side, and it is all shining upon this earth, the earth which is spherical, only half of this will be illuminated at, this, at the same time. But this part will remain in darkness. This will be in daylight. But as the earth rotates now, it means it's one at a time. This, one, this area moves towards the light and this comes back to darkness. And this is what makes the day and night. But if the earth was flat, if the earth was flat like this, and this is the source of light, it means all, all of it would have been illuminated at the same time. Now, because we have this evaluation, because we have this alternation in seeing the sun, that's why it is made a critical argument that the shape of the earth is spherical. The second evidence that was put forward is on the ship's visibility. My dear student, if you have ever been around the shoreline, around the harbor, witnessing the, the, the ship enclosing the, the coast, you can tell that not the whole ship can be seen at once. The ship would be seen by its parts. Why? Because the shape of the earth is spherical like this. It means even the water surface is occupying the shape. So it means if you are standing right here, looking at the, sh the ship encroaching, reaching the coast, you will not be able to see it because it seems the, sh the, the ship is coming right away from this direction, coming to this direction. And therefore, it is at first you witness the smoke of the ship. The second, they must will be seen at your visibility side. And at last, as it approaches, the all shape, the all ship will be seen. What does this mean? Because the earth is spherical. Whatever that is around the earth is also spherical. That's why even water surface occupies the spherical appearances. When you are leaving the coast, 
going so to, to the other part, maybe in a ship, in a canoe, or whatever. That at the coast, when we have trees or houses, as you are leaving this part, the houses will be lost by, the, by their walls. If it's the trees, it is by their stems. Why? Because you are going up, leaving the lower land. Finally, you will leave, you, 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 everything will disappear as you go away. At the same time, as you are encroaching the coast, you are reaching the coast, houses and trees that were lost on the other side will be seen first by their tops, by their reefs. But as you enclose, it's when you will see the walls and the stems of the trees. Why? Because you are ascending somewhere and descending to the other side. That is why we can argue that the, she, the, the, the earth it is spherical and not flat. The third evidence is lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipse. My dear student, this is the eclipse of the moon. And this happens when we have a full moon day during the night that we have the earth we have the moon, at the same time, we have the sun. But only those, it's only the sun that generates its own heat and light. The moon is there to reflect, and the earth is there to reflect. But if it happens that on the full moon day, the earth passes in between the sun and, and the moon, and its shadow is cast over the moon, the Earth's shadow will appear spherical and not flat. And it is the only spherical object that can give a spherical shadow. Therefore, by this, the Earth's shape is spherical, not otherwise. The other evidence is aerial photograph. Aerial photograph that if the photo of the earth is taken aerially from a far distance, its shape appears spherical and not flat. The other one is circumnavigation. Circum, circum means a circle. So circumnavigation, just moving around, just moving around, it is said that if one moves around the earth at a certain speed, maintaining the same direction, he will automatically, after a number of days, come back to the point of origin because if the earth bears this shape and the one moves around, okay, automatically he will come back to his former position as he started from. The other evidence is the shape of other heavenly bodies. The shape of other heavenly bodies. Stars, comets, messiahs, and other planets that when they are visualized, they appear spherical, they appear round. And because now the neighborhoods is around, we expect that even the Earth's shape is also spherical. And lastly, the last evidence is the circular Earth's horizon. Circular Earth's horizon. What is the horizon? It is the ability of you to see something yonder. That now, if you are somewhere on an open ground, where your eyes cannot see beyond, it appears as if the part of the sky is in touch with the earthy surface. That becomes your horizon. Now, it's as if you are here looking at something. Now, because the earth is spherical, even the atmosphere also follows the trend. It's also spherical. Why? Because it crosses the spherical object. And therefore, if that is the case, 
this will be witnessed at your horizon. Okay, you are here looking at this part. But now, because you cannot see beyond, it seems as if the part of the atmosphere is in touch with the part of the earth's surface. And this becomes your demarcation of seeing. Now, because it is of the same shape, we can state that the earth is very spherical and not flat or not, not otherwise. My dear students, we are living on the planet Earth. And we are here to tell the all good of the planet Earth. We have described all along the planet Earth, the atmosphere, and now we have seen the shape of the planet Earth as a matter of argument. If one were to ask, kindly defend the, the shape of the Earth, which things would you have spoken about? Obviously, you will come back to my point that the Earth's surface, the Earth in general, is very spherical. You will tell us the reasons for that shape, including rotation of the Earth and the force of gravity. But now, to make it clear, I will go further and give people key to argument by giving the evidences for the Earth's shape. From there now, everything will be clear that the Earth is spherical in shape and not otherwise. As the learning activity for this part, activity for, for this part, my dear student, activity number one, Explain the main causes for the Earth's shape. The main causes for the Earth's shape. Explain the main causes for the Earth's shape. And secondly, The second, we can quote, the Earth is a flattened sphere. The Earth is a flattened sphere. Describe the main evidences to support this. Describe. The main evidences to support, to support this. My dear student, thank you for watching. We are going for a short break. We'll be right back. Don't go away.